Good evening. Good evening, beloved. Welcome to another Tuesday Talks with Pastor. You know, every Tuesday, I get so excited like it is the very first Tuesday. For I am e just elated, ecstatic that God would use us at Mount Zion Tabernacle Church as an instrument to deliver his word as an instrument to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, saints, why don't you text your neighbor and text your sister, text your daughter and tell her the pastor's on on Tuesday Talks. I just want to let you all know that this is live on Facebook and we encourage you to like us on Facebook. We encourage you to to just comment and, and to follow us on Facebook. Amen? Let us pray. Glory to God. I'm so glad you came. <laughs> Father, we thank you today. We thank you in Jesus' name. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord, to study your word. For we know, God, that it is your word that changes minds. It is your word that changes lives. It is your word that changes direction. It is your word that positions us to be blessed by you. Father, we thank you for your word. Now, Lord God, we ask for revelatory knowledge. We ask for wisdom. Lord, we ask that you would put your Holy Ghost power on top of every word that it would pass through the airways with the power and do what you intended it to do. And we pray this in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs> Amen, saints. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you. <laughs> we are concluding um, our studies on the end times today. And just so you know, we will be going into uh, spiritual warfare next. Uh, so today we're con con concluding our studies on end times. You know... <clears throat> I want you to understand that it has been my prayer. It has been my hope that uh, our studies, which has been giving us a glimpse into what's ahead, would help us in our behavior now. Would help us in our behavior now. Glory to God. Today I want to talk about the millennium. Today I want to talk about the millennium. Saints, mankind has longed for peace, for utopia, for heaven on earth. But it, 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 seems, it, it seems as though we're not there yet. We're not there yet. You know, what do, what do you mean, Pastor? I mean that we all have longed for a coexistence, a, a peaceful existence, a, a spirit of joy. Um, uh, uh. We're just not there yet, saints. You know, we have, we're experiencing so much uh, terrorism. Uh, we're experiencing uh, neighborhood violence. We're experiencing brutality. We're experiencing pestilence. And, and we're just not there yet. Uh, uh, it seems as if something has disrupted our dream of peaceful existence. And it's sin. Sin has disrupted our peaceful existence. Mm. Let's look at Romans chapter 8, verse 22. Uh, I want to I just want to go into what the Bible has said. Watch this, watch this, Romans 8, verse 22. Are you there, saints? I hope you have your Bibles. Romans chapter 8, verse 22 says this. It says, for we know that the whole creation groans and labors with birth pains together until now. This is God saying that, that, that the reason the earth is going through what it's going through because sin has got in. You know, <clears throat> there are times that I feel like we 
are, are existing in a satanic, soaked, earthly environment. Let me say it again. There are times that I, I, I truly feel that we're, we're, we're existing in a satanic, soaked, earthly environment. But I want to declare today, I want to declare tonight, beloved, there is coming a time mm -hmm, that we will have complete peace. Let me say that again. Beloved, I declare to you tonight, there is coming a time that we'll have complete peace. And it's in the millennium. Mm -hmm. The millennium rule of Jesus Christ. Now, now, millennium means a thousand, a thousand. Six times in Revelation 20, it, it, it mentions the millennium, uh, the thousand year reign. Let's review for a minute. Let's review for a minute. Because remember, over the past weeks, over the past Tuesdays, we've discussed that Jesus' first coming and rapture his church. Then after Jesus raptures his church, there'll be seven years of tribulation. And then Jesus is coming back to set up his millennium kingdom. So today I just want to talk about this, this paradise of peace that we call the millennium. This paradise of peace that we call the millennium. Glory be to God. I mean, I don't know about you, but all this talk about tribulation, all this talk about pestilence now, I, I got kind of down. And, 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 and I'm so glad that, that God gave us uh, uh, insight into that there will be a paradise of peace. I'm so glad that God revealed to us yeah, it's going to be a little trouble, but first of all, I'm coming to get you. I'm so glad that God revealed to us, yeah, there'll be a little trouble, but after that, I'm going to establish a kingdom, a paradise of peace for a thousand years, and they call it the millennium. Glory be to God. Listen, saints, when God created uh, Adam and Eve, he said, uh, let them rule. What God had did was he established a dominion covenant. You see, the God-man was supposed to rule on earth as a steward over all God's creation. We were, we were created to have dominion over everything that God has created. We were stewards. But the rulership was interrupted by sin. When sin entered the earth, it began to, 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 to almost to desecrate. It, it began to deteriorate uh, not only the earth, but the established of peace. When sin got in, it definitely deteriorated our authority and dominion. Uh, watch this, watch this. When sin got in, there's some things that start taking place. I'm still mad about. One of the things that took place was our life spans became shorter. Marital conflict began. When sin got in, murder began. Then God had to destroy the whole earth. You remember that? He destroyed the whole earth with a flood because Sin got in. <laughs> Look at somebody in your living room and say, dang it, sin got in. <laughs> oh, if we would be honest with one another today. I like to tell my congregation, if we'll keep it 100. <laughs> most of the problems that we incur in our lives, our storms, if we would peel back the situation all the way back to the orientation. There is some sin. Uh, when we let sin in, soon after there's trouble. When we let sin in, soon after there's trouble. So what happened? What happened here, saints? God could not find a man without sin to rule over the earth he created. So God had to come down and take the form of a man in the person, Jesus Christ. God had to come down and take the form of a man uh, uh, in, the, in the person of Jesus Christ. 
That's what the Bible talks about in Luke chapter 1, verse 31 through 33. God says that Jesus came down and climbed into Mary's womb, and, 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 and he took form of a man on earth. Mary gave birth, the Bible says, to the seed of David, to the seed of David, who was to rule on the throne of God, and this is Jesus. Jesus redeemed the church. Now, now, Jesus redeemed the church. You know, that's where all the power is, saints. Sometimes we hear people saying, oh, I believe in a higher power. Oh, 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 I, I, I know God. I come to tell you today, I don't know how effective that is. In fact, I don't think it's effective at all because there are many gods. If you're not magnifying and declaring a covenant with Jesus Christ, there is no power. Mm. Let me say that again. If we are not declaring a covenant with Jesus Christ, there is no power. Mm. Now, in the rapture, Jesus will remove his church. The Bible says in the rapture, Jesus will remove his church because Jesus came to redeem the church. And the Bible says that the rapture, when Jesus comes, he will remove his church. And then when he removes his church, the wrath of God will be revealed in a seven-year period that we call tribulation. Why is that? Because when Jesus removes the church, the Holy the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit will be removed. And then the death on the uh, Jesus' crucifixion on the cross and his resurrection, that which sending back the Holy Spirit to dwell in us and on earth, that which has been holding Satan back, when it is removed, God's wrath will be revealed. Satan will no longer be held back. Because the death of crop, because the death of Christ, and the church will be lifted. <clears throat> but saints, the church will return with Christ in the millennium. Watch this. What you get to do. Or what you don't get to do. I'm talking about now rewards. But what you get to do or what you don't get to do in the millennium, saints, those of us who have uh, believed on Jesus Christ, who will be raptured, us being his church, he's going to bring us back with him in the millennium. And there'll be certain responsibilities and rewards given to us besides your glorified body. We're all going to get a glorified body, but there are certain things that will be um, attributed to you in the millennium, uh, a certain responsibility, certain rights. These re are called rewards. I want to tell you today, saints, that what you get to do or not do in the millennium, us coming back with Jesus, is established now in how faithful you live. Mm. According to your faithfulness, Let's look, uh, watch this, watch this. Let's look at Luke chapter 19, verse 16 through 18. Because we've read this uh, a story, uh, somewhat of a parable many times, but I don't think we understood that, that Jesus was talking about in this parable. He was really talking about the assignments in the millennium. Church, I'm telling you, your rewards, what you get to do and not get to do in the millennium is based on how faithful you are right now. Let's look at Luke, please. Let's look at Luke 19, verse 16. Let's look at Luke verse 19, verse 16. I just love God's word. Luke verse 19, chapter 19, verse 16. Verse 16, excuse me. Chapter 19, verse 16. Let's read all the way to 18. The Bible says, uh, Then came the first, saying, Master, your mina was earned, has your, your mina has earned ten minas. And he said to him, Well done, my good 
and faithful servant. Watch this. Because you have been faithful in very little, have authority now over 10 cities. Uh-oh. Here's Jesus saying, okay, we're coming back with him. And now Jesus has taken over the entire earth for a thousand years. And he's saying, you've been faithful. You control 10 cities. You watch over five cities. Watch what he says. Watch, watch this. Watch this. Verse 17. He said to him, well done, my good and faithful servant, because you have been faithful. You have authority over 10 cities. And then he said to the second person, that the second came saying, Master, your menia has earned five minus menias. Likewise, he said to him, you also will be placed over five cities. Saints, listen to me. In the millennium, Jesus will come back with the believers to rule. And he will, and listen, and, and we will be positioned in that season, in that thousand years, according to our faithfulness now. Now, I know we shout about the millennium. Oh, we're going to come back with Jesus. We're going to celebrate. We're going to be the bride. It's going to be a party. Party. Yeah, the Bible says there's going to be a party, a wedding celebration. But I come to tell you that it is your faithfulness now that is tied to your rewards then. Don't miss that, saints. Okay. In this thousand-year rule, this will be what we call a paradise of peace. It's what I call a paradise of peace. I'm talking about the thousand-year reign, the millennium where Jesus is in control. Now, now let me let me let me give you two reasons why I say that biblical two biblical reasons why I call the millennium a paradise of peace. Number 1, Jesus will rule and there will be absolutely no rebellion for a thousand years. And Jesus is going to use us to make it happen. I'm talking about us with glorified bodies. Number two, the reason why the millennium, I call it the paradise of peace. Number two is because Satan will be bound. Satan will be bound. Let me show you something. Let's turn our Bibles, if we can, to Revelations chapter 20, verse 1 through 2. Revelations chapter 20, verse 1 through 2. Look what the Bible says. I saw an angel come down. I'm in Revelations chapter 20, verse 1. It says, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key, watch this, to the bottomless pit. A great, watch this, a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon, the serpent of old. Remember last week we taught you that the, the dragon was the devil. Watch this. The dragon, the serpent of old. Who is the devil? And Satan. And bound him for a thousand years. Saints, when, when Jesus brings us back, to establish his millennium kingdom on earth, Satan will be bound for a thousand years. What does that mean? That means no more deception for a thousand years. Now remember, the reason why sin is even here is because of the deception of Satan. But God says that for a thousand years, there is no more deception, no more lies, only truth. Wow, wow. You know, one of the reasons why God says for us to stick to his word, because God understands that, 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 that one of the reasons why sin is rampant in anyone's life is because of the deception of Satan. 
because of the lie of the devil. You got to understand something. Satan been lying for 6,000 years. He good at it. Anytime you do something for 6,000 years, you good at it. You see, but, but God is saying to you and I today, beloved, that if we stick to his word, no matter how good something looks, if we stick to the word of God, no matter how something feels, only the word of God can override the deception of Satan. Only the word of God can override the deception of Satan. Let me show you something. Let's look at Revelations 19. Let me show you something. Let's look at Revelations 19, verse 7 through 10. I want to show you something. I want to show you something about the millennium. I want to show you something that, that leads into the millennium. Watch this. Revelations 19. Turn your Bibles to Revelations 19, verse 7. The Bible says this. Glory to God. The Bible says, let us be glad. You and I, right? This is God saying, right now, I need you to be glad about what I'm getting ready to tell you. He says, um, let us be glad and rejoice. God is saying right now, uh, uh, Pastor Michael is getting ready to share something with you, and it is for you to be glad and rejoice. He says, let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory. For, while we're giving you glory, God, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted, watch this, granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright. For the fine linen is the righteous acts of the saints. Mm -hmm. We clothed, the Bible says we're clothed in our righteous deeds. Okay, watch this. Then he said to me, write this, blessed, oh here comes that good news, blessed are those who who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Blessed are those who will be coming back with Jesus, because those who have come back with Jesus are those who were raptured with Jesus. Those who were raptured with Jesus are those who believed in Jesus. Watch this. Then he said to me, right, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he said to me, these are the true sayings of God. And I fell at his feet to worship him. But he said to me, see that you do not do that. I am your fellow servant and of your brethren who have the testimony of Jesus. This is John saying, I'm telling you what God told me to tell you. Don't worship me. Get happy about what God has said. Watch this. Watch this. Worship God. For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. What's, what's, what's happening here, saints? What's happening here? Now, now, now watch this. Watch this. The Bible is talking about the marriage of Jesus to the church. The Bible says Jesus is the bridegroom and that we are the bride. The church is the bride. So now the, the Revelations is discussing the marriage because the marriage precedes the millennium. That, 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 that goes right into the millennium because actually the millennium is the reception party of the marriage. Oh, you got to get this. Watch this. The church is the bride. Now watch this. I want to share something with you, my Bible scholars. Actually, the Jewish weddings really mimic the, the, the wedding supper that Jesus describes in Revelation that would take place right before the millennium. The, 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 the Jewish wedding celebration really mimics that. The first stage of a Jewish, the first stage of a Jewish wedding is what they call a contract. It's where it's where one family 
makes a contract with another family to join uh, parties of one family and the other family in marriage. Well, that's the same thing happens with us. Before anything can start, we have to have a contract with Jesus. We have to have a covenant with Jesus. We have to accept the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross, which gives us a blood contract, a blood covenant with Jesus. Number two, what happens in a Jewish wedding, uh, a wedding party, wedding ceremony, is first they do a contract. The second thing that the Jewish celebration of a wedding does is uh, the bride goes out and finds a place for them to live. And then he comes back for his bride. What does Jesus say? Once we become saved, because the contract is our salvation, then Jesus says in John 15, 14, John 14, that he's going to prepare a place for us. And where he goes, there will be. He said, uh, don't trouble yourself, because huh, I'm preparing a place for you. He says, don't be troubled. I'm coming back to get you, saints. Oh, that's good news. Jesus says, I'm coming back to get you. He's coming to get you. Jesus says, you have a mansion. You got a mansion. Be careful because if you have not accepted Jesus Christ, then your address is 666 Crispy Street. But if you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, rest assured, your mansion is already prepared. Jesus says, I'm coming back to get you. That's the second phase of a Jewish wedding. The man goes out and finds a place for him and his bride to live. That's what Jesus has done. Then the Bible says that the third part of a Jewish celebration is a party. They have a wedding celebration. Well, the third part that correlates to us as believers is the third part is us in the millennium. That's our reception. That's the wedding party. That's our reception. And guess what? The wedding party is going to go on for a thousand years. <laughs> it's going to go on for a thousand years. When the, the, the millennium is literally a celebration of our marriage to Jesus. And all of this is going to take place in Jerusalem. Jerusalem's the center place. And, 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 and the Jesus is going to marry the church. He's marrying his bride. And we're going to have a wedding celebration for a thousand years, guys. If you, so if you notice in the Bible, it talks about also that, that, that there will be people at the wedding. That kind of got me when I read that, that, that there will be people at the wedding. And it kind of alluded to people other than, than the bride, the church. And so as I did more research, there will be other people at the wedding that, that, that was not the church that was raptured. Who is that? That's the Old Testament saints who, who, who just believed by faith before Jesus had even come back to the cross. They'll be at the wedding. Also, you know who will be at the wedding? Is the tribulation saints. There will, believe it or not, be some saints who hold on. And and and, and so there will be some people who get saved in the tribulation. It's going to be tough, but it will happen. And the angels will be at the wedding ceremony. Now I want to talk to you for a minute because I want to explain to you what 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 does this millennium look like? Because I want us to get excited that, that Jesus is coming to get me and we're going to have a party with Jesus for a thousand years. What am I saying? This dream that we have of, of, of utopia, of peace, of no rebellion, of no sin, of no deception, life more abundantly, it is coming. It's in the millennium. Let me show you what it looks like, saints. Let me show you what the millennium looks like. Let me take a few scriptures from Isaiah. Turn your Bibles, if you can, to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 2. Let's go back to Isaiah. Now, this millennium is described everywhere. I could spend five days just literally just going through scriptures describing what the millennium will look like. I'm just going to take a few out of Isaiah because we're time constricted. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 2. Verse 2. I'm going to read from verse 2 to verse 3. Watch this. It says, Now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountain, that the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established on the top, top of the mountains, and shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow from it. 
Wait a minute. Remember, Jerusalem will be the center place. And the scripture is saying that, 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 that when Jesus comes back, he's setting up shop. And, and Jerusalem will be the center place. And he's saying that all nations will function under God's rule flowing out of there. Watch this. He says, And it shall be exalted above the hills, and all nations shall flow to it. Many people shall come and say, Come and let us go to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways. We he, now get that. That that that's us just kicking it with Jesus. Just going visit with Jesus. Jesus, let me ask you a question. How you doing today? Now listen, listen. He said he'll teach us his ways. We shall walk in his paths. We'll be walking and talking with Jesus. Now watch this. For out of Zion shall come forth the law. Out of grace shall come forth the law. And the word of God from Jerusalem. From Jerusalem, watch this, he shall judge between the nations, rebuke many people, watch this, they shall beat their swords into plowshares and, and, and their spears into pruning hooks, watch this, he's saying no, there's not going to be any swords and, and, and there's not going not gonna to be any spears and watch this, and he says, and nations shall lift up swords uh, against nations shall not lift up swords against nations. What is he saying? There'll be no wars. There'll be no wars in the millennium. He says, no nation will lift up a sword against another nation. He says, neither shall they even learn about war. Mm. He said, neither shall they learn about war. On the house of Jacob, come and let us walk. This is Jesus saying, come on, let me show you about what the millennium will look like. He says, in the light of the Lord, okay, for, for you have forsaken your people, the house of, 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 of Jacob. Watch this, watch this. Because they are filled with eastern ways. They are soothsayers like the Philistines. They are pleased with the children of the foreigners. Their land is also full of silver and gold, and there is no end to their treasures. Their land is also full of horses, and there is no end to the chariots. Watch this. This is God taking the wealth from the wicked and releasing it to the righteous. The Bible says that they will be full of gold, full of silver. Uh, he says that the land will be full of horses. Watch this. And in endless chariots. You don't have to worry about getting a ride. <laughs> uh, watch this. The land will also, watch this. He says that their land is also full of idols. They worship the work of their own hands, that which their own fingers have made. But now people bow down, and each man humbles himself. Therefore, do not forgive them. Enter, watch this, watch this. He said, they entered into the rock and were hid in the dust. Let's go back, let's go back, let's go back to verse 2 and 3. It says, it says, now it shall come to pass in the latter days that the mountains of the house of the Lord shall be established on the top of the mountains, shall be exalted above hills, and many people shall come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and the house of Jacob, and he will teach us, and we shall walk in his path. And out of Zion shall come forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Saints, Jerusalem will be the center place and every nation will function out of that. And the saints that come back with Jesus in the millennium will help him oversee. Now, we're still talking about what does, we're still talking about what does the millennium look like. Go to Isaiah verse 11. Go to Isaiah chapter 11. Go to Isaiah chapter 11. I want to, now, now, 
when I was just reading from two, and I kind of went a little far, I went to like verse five, six, seven, and eight. I want you to understand what that was, is that was revelations. That was John explaining the day of the Lord. That was John explaining uh, the wrath and, and why the wrath was revealed and who it was revealed on. So I don't want to confuse you. I kind of read a little too far. I should have just read verse two and three. But I went on and, I, and, and I'm talking about Isaiah chapter 2 and I went on and I read from 5 to 10. What I want you to know in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 5 through 10, that's uh, 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 Isaiah describing the day of the Lord. The day of the Lord, remember I told you the day of the Lord is synonymous with the tribulation. That was describing the tribulation. Okay, so let's go to Isaiah 11, verse 1 through 9, because I want to show you a little more about what the tribulation, I mean, what the millennium will look like. Let's go to chapter 11, verse 1 through 9. I want to show you a little more about what the millennium will look like. Verse 1 says, There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, that's Jesus, a branch shall grow out of his roots. Watch this. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. The spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. His delight is in the fear of the Lord, and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes, nor de watch this, watch this, nor decide by the hearing of his ear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor. And decide uh, with equality, decide with equity for the meek of the earth. Watch this. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth. This is Jesus when he comes back with the millennium, with, with us taking control. This is Jesus describing how he's going to take control when he comes back. He's taking control over the whole earth. He says, he shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips, he shall slay the wicked. This is Jesus saying, when I come back from the millennium, the wicked have to go. Watch this. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins. When Jesus comes, there's going to be total righteousness. Watch this. And faithfulness, the belt of his waist. Now, this is what I love, because what Jesus got just got through describing was that what he's going to do when he hits the earth coming for the thousand-year reign. Jesus, how he's going to wipe out the wicked. But now, he's going into describing, in verse 6 through 9, he's going into describing now, once Jesus lands, once Jesus gets here with all of us, what, what is it going to look like? Verse 6 says, the wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. The leopard shall lie down with the young goat. <laughs> the calf and the young lion and the fatting shall dwell together. The little children shall lead them. Watch this. The cow and the bear shall gaze. The young ones shall lie down together. The lion shall eat straw with the ox. The nursing child shall play with cobras. Watch this. And the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. Well, th there's no pain. There's no injury. Watch this. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all of the holy, holy mountain. Saints, in the thousand-year reign, in the millennium, there will be no pain. He says, not going to hurt or destroy anyone. Watch this. He says, the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Do you see that? The rule of God shall be so righteous in the millennium that even the animals will lay together in peace. You got animals that by nature would be eating one another. But here's Jesus saying that even the animals when he comes back will operate in utopia, in a spirit of peace. Did you, did you hear what he said? He said that he said that the, the knowledge of God will rule all of creation. 
The Bible says the knowledge of God during the thousand year millennium will rule all of creation. What does that mean when I say the knowledge of God will rule all creation? That means no sin. That means no sin. Uh-oh. Let's look at 65. I'm not through showing you the good news of the millennium because I just showed you that God is saying it's going to be absolute peace when he shows up. Absolute peace. No fighting. No bickering. No arguing. No hating. No dissension. No backbiting. No, uh-oh, no gossip. Come on, somebody, in the millennium. Now, let's look at Isaiah 65 as I hasten to my close. Let's look at 65. Isaiah 65, verse 17 through 20. I got kind of happy right there when I started talking about how good the millennium was. I kind of see it in my spirit. How many of you know you got to see it before you can see it? I got uh, uh, something down in my knowing, a vision of, of, of just, can you imagine being in a place so serene that you never have to walk? You never have to watch over your back. And being in a place so serene, you never have to lock your door. You never have to watch your pocketbook. You never have to worry about, is it food in the refrigerator? You never have to go to the doctor. I'm talking about the millennium where Jesus rules. There's going to be an absolute atmosphere of righteousness and the knowledge of God will rule over all creation. And the knowledge of God ruling over all creation will eradicate all sin and rebellion. Saints, this entire thousand years is going to be a celebration, a wedding reception. Because when Jesus comes back in his thousand year reign, it's going to be a wedding supper. He's coming and he's marrying his bride, the church. Amen. Let's look at Isaiah 65, verse 17. Isaiah 65, verse 17. It says, For behold, I create a new heaven and a new earth. And the former shall be not remembered. It, sh you, it shall not come to your mind. But be glad. There he is telling us to be glad and rejoice again. He's saying, but, but be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. Watch this. Behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem and joy in my people. The voice of the weeping, watch this, shall no longer be heard. Oh my gosh, no more crying. He says, nor the voice of crying be heard. Look what it says in verse 20. He says, now I love this part. He says, no more shall an infant from their life, no, it says, excuse me, no more shall an infant from there live but a few days. Now remember, one day to us, a thousand days to us is like one day to God. He says that no more shall an infant there live but a few days. Watch this. He says, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. Watch this. For a child shall die 100 years old. Now, that kind of confused me a little bit at first until I asked God. God explained that to me. What do you mean for a child shall die at 100 years old? God is saying in the millennium, 100 years old, 100 years old is still young. A hundred years old is still young in the millennium. Saints, do you realize that in the world we live in today, that the average lifespan of a man is 79 years old? 
the average lifespan of a woman is 82. God said in the millennium, he's bringing back long life. <laughs> he's bringing back long life. Oh, glory be to God. Hallelujah. Because not because in the millennium, watch this, because in the millennium, there'll be no sin. And do you remember what we declared at the beginning of this study? That it was when sin got let in that our lifespan began to be shortened. Well, in the millennium, there will be no sin. And lifespan will begin to go back, people go back to living long, long and prosperous lives. Wow. Now let's close. At closing, I want you to look at um, Isaiah 65, verse 21 through 25. So just move on down to verse 21. I want to show you something. Because I want you to leave, I really want you to leave encouraged. Saints, the reason why that we've been sharing this, what we call an insight into the end times, an insight into that which is yet to come. The reason why we've been sharing that, saints, in hopes that it would give us uh, hope now, in hopes that it would change someone's behavior now, in hopes that it would have someone running to the altar saying, what must I do to be saved, in hopes that it would make us want to tell our neighbor about the good news of Christ, in hopes that it would want us to live a faithful life, being ready when Jesus comes. That's the purpose of us sharing the prophecies and sharing the word of God concerning end times, meaning things yet to come, that we would adjust our behavior now. Do you hear me, beloved? Look at uh, verse 21. I'm still in Isaiah chapter 65. Look at verse 21. The Bible says, They shall build houses and inhabit them. Watch this. They shall have vineyards and eat the fruit. Okay, watch this. They shall not plant and another eat. God is saying there's not going to be any stealing. Do you remember what was happening to Gideon? Do you even remember back in the story with Gideon why he was hiding in the wine press? He was hiding because back then what would happen is, is the Israelites, they, they would... They would, they would cultivate their land, they would grow their fruit, they would grow their crops, and right when harvest season came, the Midianites would come in and ram, run, uh, ravage the land and to just take all their, their, their harvest and just ravage their land. That was the reason why Gideon began to, 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 to raise up his crops down and, and he, he created like a little pit of wine press. They were hiding. They were worried about every time they grow up a oh, ear of corn, the Midianites come and take it. I come to tell you today that in the millennium, the devil will be bound. He will not take anything else. Saints, we will enjoy everything God has for us to the fullest. Watch this. Let's go back. Verse 22. We shall not build and another inhabit. <laughs> uh, uh, raise your hand if you ever lost your house <laughs> there is no repossession uh, uh, um, there is no repossession uh, in the millennium no one will lose their homes no one will lose the joy that they have no one will lose that peace that's been established watch this he says they shall not plant and another eat for, for as the days of the tree so shall be the days of my people. Watch this, watch this. And my elect, my church that's with me in the millennium, my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain. Come on, saints, I'm talking about us at the wedding reception. I'm talking about us who have come back with Jesus in the millennium. They shall not labor in vain, but bring forth children, but bring forth children for trouble, for they shall be the descendants of the blessed Lord and their offsprings with them. 
It shall come to pass that before, watch this, before they call, Jesus will answer. What is he saying? Before they call, Jesus will answer. Jesus is saying the millennium, you ain't even got to pray. Just go, hey, Jesus, can I talk to you for a minute? You know, um, watch this, watch this. And while they still speaking, Jesus will hear them. Verse 25 says, and the wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw with the ox. The dust shall be the serpent's food. And they shall not hurt or destroy in all of the mountains, says the Lord. Saints, in the thousand year period that we call the millennium, that Jesus Christ's kingdom, that Jesus will reign, there will be no destruction. There will be no pain. Amen. Saints, thank you for it has been a wonderful time uh, diving into some of, because we couldn't get to all of it. We, we'd really take us about six months. But, but, but just unpacking some of the revelatory knowledge and, and some of the prophecy and, and, and some of the foretold uh, end time revelations. It has been a wonderful time sharing this with you. Remember, we're next going to go into spiritual warfare. Saints, I want you to just hear this. There will be no evil in the millennium. Saints, why don't you join us this Sunday? We're going to have a wonderful time this Sunday in packing, unpacking, excuse me, unpacking revelatory knowledge about Pentecost. For it is Pentecost Sunday this Sunday, and we will be discussing Pentecost. Can I share something with you before we go? One of the things that God has revealed to me, he said to me, did you not know that I've given you guys a taste of the millennium? And I said, what are you talking about, Lord? He says, I've given all of you a taste of the millennium. And he said to me very clearly that when he sent the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is a taste of the millennium. Come Sunday, while we unpack the arrival of the Holy Ghost on Pentecost Sunday. Amen. God bless you, saints. We love you, and we thank you for tuning in to a Tuesday Talk with Pastors. Be blessed.